The Budget and Finance Committee meeting is called to order. I'm going to read the, um, well, first we'll do the roll call vote. Excuse me. Uh, we'll take the roll first. Director Cooper, will you take the roll, please? Yes, ma'am. Allen? Here. Benedict? Present. Druffle? Here. Glover? Mendez? Here. Porterfield? Present. Roten? Sledge? Suara? Here. Syracuse? Tombs is here. I'm, I'm here, John. Here, okay. Bircher? Present. Young? Present. I'll go back quickly. Glover? Roten? Sledge? That's 10, 10 present. You have a quorum. All right, thank you. I'm going to read the electronic meeting motion. Pursuant to Governor Lee's executive order number 71 regarding electronic meetings, I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the Metropolitan Council that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Can I get a motion? Come in. Second. And properly moved and seconded. Director Cooper, will you take the roll, please? Roll call vote. Allen. Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffle? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Hercher? Young? Aye. Nine in favor, zero against. All right, motion carries. Next is the consent agenda. There are seven items on the consent agenda. Resolution 2021-716, resolution 2021-719, resolution 2021-720, resolution 2021-721, resolution 2021-723, 7-24, and 726. Are there any of those that need to come off of the consent agenda before I read the captions? Chair, R is 21 on 719. 719, okay. Are there any other items that need to come off of the consent agenda? Councilwoman Suara. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know, maybe Director Cooper can tell me the best way to do this. I don't necessarily want it to come off consent, but I do have a question about uh, 723. Uh, if, if there's any discussion, it will need to come off consent. Okay, then uh, if that would come up too, please. All right. Is there anything else that needs to come off of consent? Councilwoman Suarez, your hand is still up. All right. Seeing no other hands, I'll read the caption. Resolution 2021-716 Tombs authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle a personal injury claim of April McQueen against the Metro government in the amount of $80,000. Resolution 2021-720, um, Toombs, Taylor, Allen, Suarez, and Welch approves an assignment and assumption grant agreement amendment from Safe Haven Family Shelter in the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to the Metro Social Services Department for support services and administrative costs to strengthen and improve the effectiveness of the program. Resolution 2021 that's my spot. 721, Toombs Taylor Hancock approves an amendment to a grant from the United States Environmental Protection Agency to the Metro Board of Health for the ongoing collection of data on ambient air concentrations for five particular matter in Nashville. Resolution 2021-724, Toombs Taylor Bradford and Hancock approves a grant from the Marjorie A. Newoff Private Foundation Incorporated to the Metro Board of Health to provide funding for the care of shelter animals at Metro Animal Care and Control. Resolution 2021-726, Toombs authorizes the Metro Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Daniel 
the CASO against Metro government in the amount of $15,000. And that concludes the consent agenda. Is there anything else that needs to come off the consent? Check in, see their hands. I don't see any hands. So can I get a motion to so accept the consent? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to accept the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing no hands, Director Cooper, will you take the long call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffel? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Suara? Aye. 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 Berkshire? Aye. Young? Aye. Ten in favor, zero again. The motion carries. Moving on uh, to the next item on the agenda, resolution 2021-717. Tombs supplements the res supplements resolutions of the Metropolitan Government by authorizing the issuance of Electric System uh, Revenue Bonds 2021 Series A as requested by the Electric Power Board. Can I get a motion? So maybe. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Allen? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. If, if uh, Mr. Carroll is on the call, if he can just um, address the question of whether this would uh, in any way be connected with a rate increase or cause a rate increase. Mr. Carroll, you recognize. Good, good afternoon, members of council. Um, I have Ms. Teresa Ross Apple on the line for any ask. I'll let her speak to that for us. Thank you, Antonio. Um, yes, it, quite to the contrary, the uh, we would not expect a rate increase as a result of the bond issuance. Instead, we try to fund half of our capital improvements um, using tax exempt bond funds, which have a great low interest rate to help us spread out those costs and keep our rates lower. Great, thank you. That's important to know, appreciate it. Are there any, is there any other discussion? Seeing no hands, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffel? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Apologies, aye. Toombs? Aye. Berkshire? Councilmember Berkshire? Aye. Young? Aye. Ten in favor, zero against. Motion carries. Resolution 2021-718, Toombs supplements certain resolutions of the Metropolitan Government by electing to defease, pay, and redeem certain electron electric system revenue bonds and authorizing certain other related matters. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing no hands, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Aye. Benedict. Aye. Druffel? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Bircher? Aye. And Young? Aye. Ten in favor, zero against. Motion carries. Resolution 2021-719, Tombs, Van Rees, and Suara approve the National Diversity and Arts Leadership Internship Program grant from Americans for the Arts to the Metro National Arts Commission to provide financial and technical assistance for a local impl implementation of the program. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Bircher? Thank you, Chair. If we have someone that can speak to the implementation and uh, for the viewing audience, if they can convey uh, how one would apply for the internship. Is there someone on the line that can answer the councilwoman's questions? 
Yes, I'm here, Caroline Vincent with Metro Arts. You're recognized. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this program is in its second year. Obviously, last year we did the program and it was it had to go all virtual, but um, we are hosting five interns and the application opens later this month and that will be on our website and all of our social media. So we'll be sure to share that with you guys. And um, yeah, so it's um, actually placing students within an arts organization in Nashville. And we are hoping to recruit from local um, universities and colleges. Of course, it's a, it's a national program since Americans for the Arts is uh, sponsoring and granting funding for it, but we are hoping we'll get um, some local students for this program. Thanks so much, Caroline. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Alan? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Gruffle? Aye. Mendez? I think Councilmember Mendez had to step away for a minute. Uh, Portfield? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Berger? Aye. Young? Aye. Nine in favor, zero against. Motion carries. Resolution 2021-723, Toombs, Taylor, Bradford, and Welch approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to implement and coordinate activities and services related to HIV, AIDS, STD, and viral hepatitis prevention, testing, diagnosis, and treatment, and surveillance. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion, Councilwoman Suara? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I guess the, the, the part that I have a question about is on the word surveillance. I get the prevention and the testing, but the uh, resolution include the word surveillance, and I thought I would like someone to speak to that, why that is considered necessary as part of the uh, All right, is there someone on the phone? Someone from Metro Health on the on the call, Director Cooper. I do not see anyone. Um, I do know that this is a recurring grant, and and the word surveillance has always been in there. I don't think it it has the same meaning that it does in other contexts. But um, I don't see anyone from the health department. Yeah, I'm assuming that's track keeping track with with um, patients. Who are, who are going through treatment to see how the treatment is working. Uh, Madam Chair, I have no objection to us passing the resolution and if someone can just get me exactly what that means later, please. All right, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffel? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Berker? Aye. Young? Aye. Okay, uh, zero. Director and Chair, this is Councilmember Sledge. I'm here and I vote aye as well. Okay, 10 in favor, zero against. Thank you. Judge Cooper, this is Councilman Rowe, and I'm here as well. I vote aye. 11. All right, motion carries. And uh, Vice Chair Porterfield, can you um, handle 553 and 586, the next two items on the agenda? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Uh, let me get down to that item. BL 2020-553, Hall, Toombs, and Taylor, referred to the budget and finance, requires a resolution of the Metro Council prior to discontinuing operations at the J.B. Knowles Home Assisted Living Facility. Um, and there is an amendment for this. Uh, Madam Chair, would you like to uh, introduce your amendment? Uh, yes, I would. I move approval of the amendment with a brief explanation. So moved. Second. You're recognized, Chair. 
Uh, so this amendment um, adds language to the, the substitute that was passed uh, at the last meeting, uh, just to clarify that um, so long as there is a, a willing and, and qualified operator of the Knowles Home Assisted Living Facility, that uh, care would continue for the patients, uh, well, not the patients, continue for the residents in the facility. And that was to uh, address concerns from the administration that they can't force a, a private operator to continue operating. So this amendment makes it clear that as long as there is a operator in place that cares to continue at that facility and the administration essentially couldn't unilaterally decide to close the facility. And with that, I'd ask for the committee to approve the amendment. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, we are now open for discussion. I don't see any hands in the queue. I'm going to look one more time. Okay, we have one hand in the queue. Uh, Council Member Young, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, was, was this facility included uh, in, I know we've heard a lot uh, of mention in the discussion of, of the Bordeaux Hospital of uh, uh, legislation from 2017 or something when the council determined um, that they wanted, that, you know, that Metro wanted to slowly get out of uh, some of these health related businesses, was this facility included in that legislation? In the 2014 legislation, and if, uh, and Director Cooper, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the Knowles Assistant Living Facility is listed in that legislation. And at the time there was a completely different uh, operator, um, but yes, it is listed in that legislation. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Council Member Young. I am scrolling through. I don't see any other hands in the queue. Okay. And with that, uh, Director Cooper, could you take the vote, please? Okay, this is on the amendment. Alan? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Truffle? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Roden? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Suarez? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. James? Aye. Bircher? Aye. Young? Aye. 12 in favor, zero against. Um, the amendment passes and now uh, on to the bill as amended. Is there any discussion? You need a motion, Madam Vice Chair. Thank you so very much, Chair. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and properly seconded. And now, is there any discussion? Uh, Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, I had to step away for a minute, so hopefully I'm not... If I'm asking a brief question, just, just tell me and, and I'll... Uh, I'll go back to the, the video, I guess. Um, with the amendment, um, does the administration have a position on this? Um, Council Member Toomes, you're recognized. Yes, did, you want to direct that to, uh, did you want to direct that to the administration? Uh, yes. Council Member Mendez, oh, um, uh, Mr. Jameson, you're recognized. Thank you, Council Member, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, yes, we've been having very good discussions with Councilmember Toombs and are slated to meet uh, once more before third reading. Uh, we're very grateful for the amendment that clarified that uh, there would not be a, a need for this unless we had a willing and qualified operator. And of course, we were going to be uh, in a bind if we couldn't, uh, since we can't force a private operator um, uh, to, to do that necessarily. Um, some lingering questions that we're uh, hashing out with Council Member Toombs and hope to get those resolved before the end of the week and certainly before third reading. So, Mr. Mr. Jameson, um, as it stands with the amendments, um, would the administration be in favor of as it currently stands? 
um, ass assuming we can get clarity on um, the, the the section of the bill that uh, requires continuing the the the, the budgeted subsidy amounts, um, as you as you may know, Knowles does not. Uh, uh, does not provide indigent or charity care. They're not required to. And so if we if we extend a subsidy, would would private operators then be expecting uh, a subsidy if they're not providing indigent or charity care? Uh, we, we think there's a way through that, uh, but we need to sit down with the sponsor and uh, iron that out. And um, for Mr. Cooper, is this amendable on third reading? No, it would not be amendable on third reading without suspending the rule. Um, and thank you, uh, Councilmember Portfield, I guess for the sponsor, I guess I'm um, wondering um, if to the extent the administration is going to want further amendments. Um, to, um, is that uh, a possibility um, to agree to further amendments? Um, is it going to require suspended rules um, on third reading? I'm just curious. Thoughts about that? So I, I've talked with the administration, as Mr. Jamison has said, and, and I don't think that a, an amendment is going to be necessary. I think that there is some uh, um, I guess uh, still uh, some misunderstanding as to what that language, uh, how that language reads. Uh, and I've had uh, Director Cooper also review the language. I did. It is not my intent, and it's not how I read the language that a subsidy is required. Um, it just says that it's the intent of the council to continue the subsidy until a long-term plan is in place. Uh, to me, that reads as the subsidy being temporary and not something that has to be ongoing. Uh, however, I think there's still some, some misunderstanding uh, with the administration. So the purpose of the additional meeting is to get on the same page. But I, I don't think that an amendment is gonna be necessary. Thank you so very much, Chair. Uh, Council Member uh, Mendez, did you have any uh, follow-up questions? No, um, no, no further questions. I, I would comment that I, I would be, um, uh, I mean, I know everybody's trying hard on this and I appreciate it. Uh, I continue to be confused about uh, unintended consequences um, to this and I'm not comfortable. Um, I think I've said that before. Um, so I'm mean, going to, it's only second reading, so I'm going to, Keep thinking about it, um, but I, like I said, last time we talked about it, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman Mendez. Uh, Councilmember Rotson, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, Director Cooper, Mr. Jamerson, could you just answer my question? Uh, what, I, how many facilities total are we involved in as far as subsidies? in the healthcare business, assisted living or medical need or um, any any type of healthcare facility, do we are we like anything like Knowles anywhere else in the county? No. Uh, we obviously subsidize uh, the health clinics that are operated by the health department. Um, there's the subsidy for general hospital. Uh, there was a subsidy for Board of Long-Term Care, which is now closed. Uh, so Knowles is the only other facility. Thank you, Director Cooper. Um, uh, Councilmember Roughton, did you have any follow-up questions? Councilmember Roden, we can't hear you, so I will come back to you if you're here. I'm sorry, Madam Vice Chair. I said no, I don't have any further questions. I apologize. Thank you so much. Uh, Councilmember uh, Mendez, is that an old hand? Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Young. Is that an old hand? Um, no, ma'am. Uh, I have quite young hands, actually. Okay. <laughs> you recognize Councilman Young Hand. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, I, I'm curious um, with, with uh, some of what the administration has brought up and the fact that this would require a suspension to amend on third reading. I'm curious what the appetite of, of uh, 
uh, the sponsor is for a, a one meeting deferral, if that can help uh, the administration and, and the sponsors nail down uh, some of some of what they like to kind of, I don't know, work on a little bit. Councilmember Tones, you're recognized. I am not opposed uh, to a deferral. Again, I, I don't think that there ultimately need to be an amendment. Uh, I don't think, well, I don't think an amendment is necessary, uh, but I am not opposed to a deferral. I don't know how many times this particular legislation has been deferred. I don't know if the deferral count resets when there's a substitute, Director Cooper. I know this would be the third deferral, um, which means that it would be deferred indefinitely, but you could put it back on for the next meeting. So, so I think, uh, Madam Vice Chair, that my, my preference would be to go ahead with the uh, approval on second, and if there is a need to amend, then I would move to suspend the rules to get that amendment on it. Uh, thank you so much, Chair Toons. Uh, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Vice Chair, can someone answer who's gonna do, who, who will create the long-term plan? So in the, the legislation, it, it is uh, the administration's responsibility to submit the long-term plan. The idea is that whichever operator is in place would also uh, work in conjunction with the administration to put that plan together and submit it to the council. I, I don't I don't read that. Are we able to get that language in there so that is so that is clear? We don't want uh, uh, we don't want unattendedly that um, and this is this isn't coming out right, but what I'm trying to say is how is written it leads to chance actually as to who owns it. So in the past, when we don't specify who owns it, the, the left hand says they thought the right hand should have been doing it, and then the right hand says they thought the left hand should have been doing it, and the result ends up being it, it, doesn't, it doesn't get done. That would, that would be my suggestion, is that we specify who owns the creation of the plan and a time frame as to when the plan should be completed. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Council Member Barker. Did you want a response uh, from the sponsor um, on the recommendation, Council Member Barker? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm following in the same spirit as my colleague, Councilman Young, if, if, it's, a, it's, if it's the appetite of a sponsor. Thank you so very much, Council Member. And Council Member Tim, you recognize? So the, let's see, I'm trying to go back and forth on, on my computer. Um, so, Director Cooper, if the if it's a min, if it's deferred, and this is the third deferral, so it's deferred indefinitely. And if I brought it back, does it start over at first reading, or is it? How does that work? No, it would come back on second reading. Um, the only. Uh, change is that it would not be subject to any further deferrals. So you, you couldn't defer it again, but it would be amendable um, if it would come back as a bill on second reading. Okay. If you ask to have it put back on the agenda. Okay. Are there any other hands in queue? Not seeing any other hands. Oh, there is another hand. My apologies, Council Member Roten. You're recognized. I guess more of a point of order. Are we? Are we? Has anybody made a motion to amend? Um, not at this time, Council Member. I move to amend it. One meeting. Uh, you're are you um, moving to defer one meeting? Correct. Sorry, moving to defer. Apologize. No worries. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion on the deferral motion? Uh, Council Member Roten, would you like to be recognized again? No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, no hands in queue. Uh, 
Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, my apologies. Is this deferring it as amended? It's already uh, been amended, so we're just deferring it as it is. Okay. I do have a, a clarifying question for uh, Director Cooper. Um, with the deferral, and I, I believe we I believe we've kind of hashed this out, but I just want to make sure that that we're all on the same page. Um, with the deferral, uh, would the council member, would the sponsor be able uh, to then make the those amendments prior to uh, bringing this back to council on second reading? Uh, the bill would have to come back on second reading first, but then when it's brought back, it could be amended. Okay. Thank you so very much, Director Cooper. And seeing no other hands in queue, uh, Council Member Toombs, did you want to be recognized on the deferral? Uh, no, Madam Vice Chair. Okay, thank you. Seeing no other hands in queue, uh, Director Cooper, if you could uh, take the vote, please. On the deferral, Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Ruffle? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Roten? Aye. Mitch? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Bircher? Councilmember Bircher? Aye. Young? Aye. 12 in favor, zero again. Uh, deferral passes. Uh, thank you so much. Um, on to BL 2025-86, Tombs and others. Against uh, ordinance BL 2014-688 to reverse the Metro Council's determination that the provision of long-term medical care is obsolete and unnecessary as a governmental function, directing that certain actions be taken regarding the preservation of the licensed beds at the Bordeaux long-term care facility and appraisals of the Bordeaux long-term care and J.B. Knowles home for the aged facilities and requesting the creation of a long-term plan for the J.B. Knowles home facility. Um, and I see that there's also an amendment on this. Council Member Toombs, would you like to uh, move your amendment? Yes, my, uh, yes, Madam Vice Chair, would, uh, I'd like to move my amendment with a brief explanation. You're recognized. So this amendment um, clarifies in section four uh, in regard to when the long term the long term plan would be uh, due and also not to trigger an unnecessary and unwanted wind down that the report the long term plan will be due within 180 days of the completion of an RFP process with a successful bidder for the continued operation of the NOLS home assistant living facility or one year from the effective date of this ordinance, whichever occurs first. And with that explanation, I'd ask for approval of the amendment. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been a second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded. And for discussion um, on the amendment, Council Member Rotson, is that an old hand? Sorry about that, Chair. No worries. Is there any? I'm scrolling through. I don't see any hands on the amendment. Okay, Director Cooper, could you take the vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Aye. Mendez? Aye. Waterfield? Aye. Roten? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Bircher? Aye. Young? Aye. 12 in favor, zero against. Thank you. The amendment passes. And now, uh, can we get a motion on the bill as amended? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and properly seconded. And on the amended bill, uh, Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, does the administration have a position on this one? Uh, Mr. Jamison, you are recognized. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, kind of similar to 553, we've had very productive and, and uh, cordial and good discussions with the sponsor, Councilmember Toombs. We have uh, are scheduling a meeting on this one, um, I think later this week with Metro Legal um, and Finance. Um, the concerns raised by those departments were uh, just want to make sure we have a full handle on what the consequences would be of reversing the 2014 determination and if, if doing that by ordinance is, is appropriate. Um, finance department uh, states that uh, their appraisals, they, they don't have the in-house personnel uh, because of the degree of expertise required for appraisals of these types of facilities. So they'll need to um, farm that out, if you will, um, and don't have a, a, an expense on that quite yet. Um, Anthem Care has indicated their willingness to prepare a long-term plan or at least assist, but that's not in their contract now. They've sort of uh, alluded to the fact that they could do it if the contract was amended, which we're construing, meaning that they'll do it as an, at an additional cost, and we don't know what that quite is yet. Um, and then the last concern being that the payment from the BLTC licensure fees and assessment fees be from a, a budget item that I think may, that finance has maintained is encumbered. Now, I think those fees have been paid through the next year at least, so that I don't know that that's an immediate pressing problem, but that's my understanding of some of the concerns. But again, we, we hope to work through those with the sponsor. Um, thanks. Um, a question of uh, Mr. Cooper. Um, Mr. Cooper, um, following up on this, uh, what's in section one of this ordinance about reverse the language um, from BL 2014-688. Um, trying to figure out how to ask this question where it makes sense. Um, is section one of this ordinance necessary in order to accomplish the goals of section 6 uh, I don't I think that the, those provisions are standalone um, so I, I think that, that section one isn't critical to the other sections being implemented um, section one is just to basically take away the prior determination that that uh, providing indigent care, was a function um, for the government to provide. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Cooper. Um, my share, my, my uh, view on this one is that uh, I think section one should be um, deleted. If there's a reason um, that that's necessary at some point in the future, um, we should revisit it that. Um, as long as section one is in, unfortunately, um, can't see how I can um, split this one and, uh, and feel, I guess, a little bit bad about that, um, but that's where I'm at. Thanks, Vice Chair. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Councilman Mendez. Uh, Council Member Soror, you're breaking out. Oh, I apologize. Council Member Young was next. And after Council Member Young, Council Member Soror, you will be uh, recognized. And if you are not speaking, if you could please uh, put your mic on mute, we're getting a little feedback. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, so I, I'm, I'm trying to work through the, the timing portion of of, uh, of this, oh, there we go, my PDF closed. Um, so it's asking, well, not asking, but I guess saying that this, this plan to be submitted to council um, would either be within 100 days of the completion of an RFP process for the continued operation or a year from effective date of the ordinance. When, are we expecting an RFP process to take place? When, I mean, when is the current contract? When when does it expire? Because um, I'm a little thrown by some of the timing in this. I'm just the current contract expires on June thirtieth of this year. Yes. Okay. 
do do we know um, does the administration or the, the current operator do we know what the the intent of, of either of of, uh, of us are as far as currently uh, like does the and this is a question for the administration I I, I reckon but um, do we want to continue? This is the goal to solicit another RFP process this year. I guess is uh, question one for the administration, and then two. Um, if so, have we heard from the current operator? Is that something they're, they're interested in continuing doing, or, or to say a similar uh, situation as what happened at, at Bordeaux? Thank you, Councilmember Young. Mr. Jamison, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Councilman Young. Yes, uh, with the contract termination scheduled for June of this year, we would engage the RFP usually about six months out, and that is taking shape now. Uh, the other good news is that unlike Bordeaux, we have heard from the current operator, uh, Anthem Care, and they have expressed, uh, this was just before the last uh, Budget and Finance Committee meeting, they have expressed their desire to participate in the RFP and to continue to continue to operate if indeed they are the, the winning bidder. So I think we're in a little bit more secure position than we were with Bordeaux. Thank you so much. Council Member Young, do you have a follow-up question? Um, I do, Madam Vice Chair. Um, so going back to something that was said earlier, and I'll, I will be very blunt. I'm I'm rather ignorant of, um, uh, well, of a lot of things, but um, of exactly what what level of care um, and what what objectives are being met with this facility. Uh, I, I thought earlier I heard that we are not providing uh, charitable or indigent care at this facility. So, not to go too far off into a philosophical conversation um, and stop me if I am going down that rabbit hole, but what is Metro's purpose with this facility? And, and I don't ask that as argumentative. I, I ask that because I'm, I'm truly ignorant of, of this. Well, I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity to clarify. So if I'm understanding the, the CEO uh, from Anthem Care, Dr. Bruni correctly, his contract does not require charitable or in indigent care. He is providing, he does have patients with charitable uh, or that require charitable and indigent care, Medicare, Medicaid. I think one issue on the table for the council will be, should we nevertheless have some minimum requirement within the contract so that they're always required and that this doesn't become a purely privately insured operation that we would be subsidizing as opposed to others that are that are providing more indigent and charitable care. I think that's an opportunity we have in the upcoming RFP uh, to specify that minimum uh, if the council uh, is in agreement. And so, are we, uh, so are we, I guess we as in Metro, are we currently subsidizing care at this facility for indigent patients in addition to what um, the, the operator might be uh, providing? Or I guess explain to me what, um, why does Metro operate this facility? Well, that's a broad question, but I, I think Mr. Jameson, you get where I'm headed. Yeah, so um, it's been a long standing discussion uh, by the council, of course, stemming back even before 2014. Um, Knowles was in a much, uh, a much different place. It had an operator that, um, uh, was not uh, the envy of, of Metro or any other operator and had some, some legal issues and that prompted some, some actions by the council and the then administration that don't apply now. Uh, by all descriptions, Anthem Care is providing uh, good and adequate and satisfactory care to their, to their inpatient population. Um, 
in terms of sort of the distinction between Bordeaux and Knowles, um, the the sort of continuum of care that that you might like to see is that patients are originally treated at National General, and after some period of days or weeks, if they continue to need daily um, significant care, Bordeaux was the facility. If they don't need day-to-day -day medical care but still need skilled nursing, um, Knowles fills that that need. And so they are both very well, uh, easy to understand why a metropolitan government would see the need to offer subsidies. We had a much larger subsidy for Bordeaux in part because the building was just in horrible condition. That is not the situation with Knowles. Uh, and Knowles itself, Anthem Care deserves a lot of credit for um, up the facilities, but the subsidy is not nearly uh, to the extent it was at Bordeaux. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Co Mr. Jonathan and uh, Council Member um, Young. Council Member Soror, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, I think a, a lot of things came out through Council Members Young uh, questioning. Uh, but the part that I was going to speak to actually was on the first part, which is rescinding what was done in 2014. I think the reason why that is necessary is because of what is coming out through CM Young's questioning now is that right now we only have one facility of its kind in Knowles. We also don't have any that is providing indigenous indigenous care because Bordeaux is closed. Uh, we have the opportunity to require Knowles to do that for our patients that needs it. But we, our hands are tied because we have something on the books that says we just don't want to do this business anymore. And what I'm worried about is that without that first section, if we get into where um, Antem is not, doesn't want to go ahead with it because we're requiring the care, or maybe something else happened, then we might resort to, well, we have a law that says we don't have to do this anymore. And that's what I'm really afraid of. I think we need to consider everything, uh, uh, knowing that the one place that offer it is closed, knowing that there's no other place right now that knows that doesn't, but maybe we need to require them too. We need to start thinking in terms of our citizens that we need this care and how do we cover them as well. And I don't want us to, to, to shut the door completely uh, uh, by tying our own hands. So yes, three will stand by its own. Uh, uh, the way it, the section three and two will stand by its own, the way it's, it's reads now. But unfortunately, one is still there to preempt us from being able to continue. And so that is why I think keeping one is important. Uh, uh, the decision made in 2014 was made with the right decision, I would say, with the information and the circumstances at that time. I think that considering where we are now and everything, I think we need to revisit that. So I just wanted to to put that out there because for me, that ordinance was referred to a lot in the conversation about Bordeaux and how all of that went down. And so I don't want that to be another thing that we'll, that we'll have to refer to or that will hinder us. We did not do anything wrong legally, but we do have something there that could be an hindrance or make it uh, difficult for us to be able to take care of our residents that are most in need. So um, just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member Sora. Uh, Mr. Jameson, your hand is raised. Would you like to respond? Um, so much respond just to say that um, uh, the administration uh, isn't quite sure what to make of Section 1 and referred the issue to Metro Legal. And the, the two issues that they have raised, and we don't have an answer yet on either one, but the first one would be that if the council declares that an otherwise required government service is now obsolete and unnecessary, can that declaration be undone with a subsequent vote? And they are studying that issue now. Uh, they don't know that there's any clear authority on point, but their concern is that if uh, Section 1 is read a certain way, it could have the effect of requiring Metro immediately to be in the long-term care uh, business. Um, and then that's, we're hoping again to iron that out and to have a satisfactory answer for all parties because we just, we do want to get this right. I know it's complicated and I know these have been 
deferred. If there's any interest in, in having this paired with, with 553 so that we have it all addressed in one meeting, we would obviously welcome that opportunity, but that's, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Jamison. And uh, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, just, just two simple questions real fast. Um, how much is the, the subsidy? For Knowles, I do not, I do not know what it is on an annual basis. Okay. Uh, before this legislation, was there any conversations uh, with the operator of discontinuing providing the service? I don't know if Ms. Falls had a discussion with uh, Anthem Care in December. I think in, it was in December that she was reaching out to begin the RFP preparations and to find out their interest. Okay, I'm just asking because I, I don't I don't want us to the body to split hairs over uh, including a section, omitting a section, and 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 so forth. Um, but um, we don't have those answers. So okay, all right. Thanks, Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Council Member Archer. And I'm going back uh, through the hands. Um, Councilmember Toons, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. I just wanted to um, point out to the committee. I did reach out to to get some numbers on on what the subsidy is. I don't I don't know what the the budgeted subsidy amount is for those, but so far, um, I lost my spot. So far, the amount that. Uh, that Metro has provided to NOS to, it says loss support. So to basically uh, help NOS recoup its losses is how I read that. It's $937,035.79. And that's in addition to the $180,000 management fee that we pay uh, to the operator. So that's about $1.1 million uh, that we've paid uh, for NOS this fiscal year to date. Thank you so very much, Madam Chair. Um, Mary Jo Wiggins, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Chair. I just wanted to clarify the annual subsidy for Knowles is $2 million. Thank you so much. And I'm going back through the hands in queue. Uh, Council Member Toombs, is that an old hand? Or would you like to it around? is, Madam Vice Chair. Okay, Mary Jo Wiggins, is that an old hand? Okay, uh, Council Member Young, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, so at the risk of sounding, uh, uh, or at the risk of some deja vu, uh, once again, I'm curious of the appetite uh, uh, of the sponsor for, for a one meeting deferral uh, as it relates to Metro Legal, uh, the, the hang up that Mr. Jameson referred to as far as figuring out the, the, the section one of the legislation and can we rescind a, the, the determination that was made prior. Curious about uh, Councilmember Toombs' appetite, I suppose. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. I'm fine with the one meeting deferral. Thank you so very much. Um, Councilmember Young, are you uh, making a motion? Um, I, I will, yes. I, I'll move for a, a one meeting deferral, please. Second. Okay. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion on the deferral? Uh, okay, Council Member Sora put her hand down. Uh, Council Member Vercher on the deferral. 
Okay, Council Member Virtual put her hand down. Going through again, I don't see any hands. So, uh, Director Cooper, if you could take the vote. Oh, Council Member Sora, you're recognized. <laughs> Council Member Sora is confused. Um, this is not on the deferral, but since the conversation is continuing, I just wanted to put it out there for Mr. Jamison and the administration that if we have a budgeted two million subsidy, maybe there should be a conversation about providing our uh, indigent care. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Soar. And going through the hands, I don't see any other hands. So, Director Cooper, if you could take the vote on the deferral, please. Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffle? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Roden? Aye. Lynch? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Tunes? Aye. Bercher? Aye. Young? Aye. Twelve in favor, zero against. Thank you so very much. Motion passes. The item has been deferred. Uh, Council Member Toombs, would you like to do the last item on the agenda? Sure, Madam Vice Chair. Bill 2021-597, Parker, Toombs, and others approves a participation agreement between Metro Public Works and Monroe Infrastructure LLC for the construction of public infrastructure in phase 1A of River North. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Moving on to discussion. Councilman Parker, are you on the line? You have an amendment. Yes, I am, Chair. Um, would it would it be reasonable to um, just give a little brief overview of the bill and then um, introduce the amendment? Or how should sure. we That's fine, Councilman. Okay, thank you. Um, so this this bill um, is a participation agreement. This, if you recall back to the 2019 capital spending plan, there was um, a $20 million line item in there for improvements to the intersection of the Jefferson and First. Um, so this is the area um, just across Jefferson Street behind Top Golf is, um, is where this initial phase called the landings of the River North project is. Essentially, through sort of negotiation with the administration, um, that $20 million has been, Metro's liability in this phase has been sort of whittled down to $13.8 million. Um, essentially, the way this functions is uh, the private contractor does the work, and if they do it to Metro's specifications and qualifications, um, Metro will reimburse them. Um, so this sort of gives, provides more oversight um, than just simple um, uh, uh, more ability for things to be done to Metro specifications than just regular codes, inspections, and whatnot would provide. Um, and um, I think uh, the amendment, what this amendment does is three things. The amendment, excuse me one second, I'm scrolling around. Um, it adds language into section, adds a new section, new section three, um, that essentially that reimbursement for this work completed um, is contingent on Metro's ability to pay. So this is sort of like a nuclear escape clause. We don't anticipate ever utilizing this. Um, we would have much, much, much bigger problems on our hands. Um, this is if there's some you know, devastating economic circumstance and we're having to really focus on say life safety and education um, important things like that. Um, adding this clause in there allows us um, in such cases to, to prioritize, again, things like life safety in those cases. Um, we've also, in the amendment, changed some of the language around the establishment of a central business improvement district. Um, so a central business improvement district is a, essentially a property tax surcharge um, for a given area. Um, it, it's, you know, I think the rationale here is that with public investment um, uh, into this project to this degree, um, you know, I think that that's, I think that that's sort of, the, the property tax surcharge would sort of help this project pay back some of the public investment or all of it. Um, 
over a period of time. And um, that can be done one of two ways. It can be done by a petition of the property owners or it can be done by resolution of council, as I understand it. Um, so what this does is it just makes it clear um, that we intend to accomplish that one of two permissible ways and, and that this body might be expected in the future to, to establish a CBIT in this area um, by resolution. Um, I believe that's essentially what, I'd like to say one more thing before we move to discussion and, and before I move that amendment, if that's all right. Um, if you look at, um, no, apologies. I'm just gonna go ahead and move the amendment. Um, if someone would please move the amendment. Move the amendment. Is there a second? Second. Again. All right. It's been properly uh, moved and seconded to approve the amendment. Is there any discussion on the amendment, Councilman Mendez? Not on the amendment. All right. Seeing no hands, Director Cooper, can you take a roll call vote on the amendment? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffel? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Porterfield? Aye. Roten? Councilmember Roten? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Suara? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. James? Aye. Berger? Aye. Young? Aye. 12 in favor, zero against. All right, motion carries. Now we're on the bill as amended. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve the bill as amended. Any discussion? Councilman Mendez. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to provide a, a little bit of commentary um, because this uh, this participation agreement bleeds over from last term to this term. Um, I want to thank uh, Council Member Parker and the administration for continuing to work on this. I know it's been difficult with um, COVID going on and tornadoes and everything, um, and, and, but we stuck with it. Um, this, uh, and I, I think everybody knows that uh, um, over my five years in office, I've been as aggressive um, as anybody in trying to bring more transparency and more sense to how we spend economic development dollars as a city. Um, I've been, um, I've argued that uh, a project like this um, wouldn't be appropriate for tax increment financing, um, uh, but it should be direct spending if we're gonna spend on um, projects like this um, that remake um, large chunks of real estate um, that, you know, doing direct spending on roads and infrastructure, that, that that's the kind of work the, the city should be doing. Um, here, um, the, um, when this got passed a um, capital spending plan, it was at $20 million. Um, through the administration's hard work, it's down to $13.8 million. Um, that involved compromise um, by the developer also. Um, there's a um, clawback provision um, in, in the actual agreement in the fine print that if they don't do um, what they're supposed to do, the developer, then any money they've been paid, they have to pay back. Um, that's language um, that uh, um, we got into the, um, um, the, the development over by uh, the, rail, the gulch on the other side of the river last term, and it's in, involved here too. All in all, this is, um, uh, unless somebody wants to take the position that there's absolutely no spending Metro should ever do on roads and infrastructure, um, for economic development, which would be, I think, a tough position. This is this is what it should look like, and it's been uh, negotiated with a part, uh, sharp pencil um, by everybody. And so I, I think this is, uh, um, I'm, I'm glad to be able to support this. Um, thank you for uh, indulging me. All right, we can see if there are any other hands. Okay, Councilwoman Suara. Uh, thank you, Chair. 
Um, I just wanted to, to say that when I first saw the bill, I'm new to it because it's my first time on council. Uh, but in looking at it, one of my first questions was why are we paying a developer, why are we supporting a public project? Uh, uh, and when I look at the amount, that was my first concern. Uh, but in looking at it, someone asking the questions, what we're actually paying for is not for the developer, it's for public roads that our people will be using. We're just doing a project uh, uh, in partnership. And so I think that clarifies it a lot. And the fact that this money was already uh, allocated and budgeted in our capital funding last year, I think should also provide uh, some clarity or clarification uh, for the viewing audience to borrow uh, CM Virtue's uh, uh, famous words. And so this is this is roads and infrastructure and sidewalks and things that we're doing for our community, but we're just doing it in tandem with the project that is occurring. And I think that clarification was important for me, and I think it will be uh, important for our, our our citizens as well. And so with that, I do support the bill as well. Thank you. Councilman Young, and then, uh, oh, the hand went down. Councilman Young. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, well, I, I thought I may have saw actually Councilman Parker's hand up, but now it's down, but I was kind of gonna, I guess, skip over and let you go to him since this is his district. Uh, I'll, I'll defer to him before I ask any questions. Okay, Councilman Parker. Thank you, Chair. And and just sort of since we're kind of grazing on the uh, the subject of you know the the overall benefit or validity of doing arrangements like this, um, if you if you look on the on the legislation in the third recital, um, there's a there's a a very rough projection of of revenue. Um, that this this property would be expected to generate. Um, now, I, that's that's fantastic, and I, I think that that's a that's a great number. Um, but I've asked finance to sort of give us a more detailed breakdown of the anticipated fiscal impact of this development, um, specifically, you know, looking at the the. Uh, debt service on the 13.8 million reimbursement, looking at revenues we expect to be generated by the property, looking at the impact of the C bid, but also looking at um, uh, liabilities that Metro would incur um, as a result of this development. So, you know, if, if once these uh, parks, the greenway, the roads are all Metro's responsibility, you know, we will be incurring costs to um, maintain and operate those roadways and, and greenways and whatnot. So, you know, essentially, I, I, I've never seen with a project like this, um, you know, that sort of detailed level of breakdown, but it, the request is into finance. I'd hope to have that for y'all um, in your inboxes before this budget meeting, but um, I, I hope that we can get that very soon and we'll get that out to all the council members so that we can kind of see a more detailed projection and, and breakdown. Um, Councilman Young. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I was hoping maybe Councilman Parker would have answered uh, a question I was about to ask, but I, I suppose he's not in mind reading this afternoon. Um, so there seems to be discussion, or not discussion, I mean, it, it's in the bill, especially now that it's, it's amended of, of a CBID and um, as someone who is not like um, intimately familiar with some of the infrastructure and, and street requirements um, in that area, I, I'm wondering uh, of what's going to be built as part of this, of the, the improvements that will be dedicated to Metro, are they of a greater, uh, are they a lot nicer than we would typically see with different uh, amenities? And, and I say amenities, but 
uh, I, I guess what I'm getting at, how, how sure are we that a, a CIP or a, I mean, look, excuse me, a C bid? I'm confusing my alphabet soup. Uh, will be put in place to cover some of those additional costs, such as whether there's the you know brick pavers or the landscaping and stuff like that. Uh, because I feel like now is probably the time that it is makes the most sense to make sure a C bid gets in place. Since I think there's just one or, or two maybe property owners, and it's a lot easier to get 70% uh, or whatever that threshold is approval from one or two property owners than multiple once it's kind of on on down the road. So I, and I don't know if that's necessarily for uh, Councilman Parker or maybe maybe Mr. Jamison has a little more insight on those seedbed discussions, but. Um, that's what I'd like to hear a little bit more about, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilman Parker, would you like to respond to that? Um, yes, I'm happy to. I mean, I think that part of what the amendment does is clarify that it is the intent of Metropolitan Council to establish a CBID. So whether that be by petition or by resolution, um, that's clarified as two viable options to establish that CBID. Um, if if um, Mike Jamison would be willing to speak or possibly Director Cooper about, you know, that that process of, um, let's say, if, if, if we didn't have the petition signatures and the, the Metro Council were to establish a CBID um, by resolution, could could someone speak to how that works? I'm not super familiar with the state code regarding C bids. Uh, Madam Madam Chair, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Mr. Jamison, you recognize? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I guess just to uh, first address uh, Councilman Young's questions, uh, and I, and forgive me, Councilman Young, if I'm paraphrasing incorrectly, but sort of the risk of. If, if this becomes sort of the Cadillac of landscaping, um, is that really an equitable use of a CBID when other neighborhoods may not expect brick pavers and, and other amenities? So keep in mind the CBID here is essentially a refunding mechanism for the 13.8 that you're being asked to, to put into this. Uh, because debt is a legitimate uh, reimbursement expense from CBID revenues, you get that back. So if the developer decides to put in a, a nicer version of infrastructure, that's that's on his dime. Not It's not going to accelerate or enhance or increase the 13.8 that we're giving. But the 13.8 that we're giving will be reimbursed through uh, a, a slightly increased assessment and so that the people who enjoy the use of the amenity are the ones paying for it. Uh, under the state legislation, you can, as Councilman Parker uh, very correctly stated, you do through uh, by petition of the property owners, and it's a computation of at least 50%, at least representing two thirds of the valued property, um, or you do it by council resolution. But the council resolution has the same elements within it that the petition version does. You would have an assessment of the value of the improvements, what other amenities are requested, specified boundaries, and so forth. Uh, and the amendment adds to just sort of in the interest of transparency, notification to the council, one of these two approaches will be will be taken. We can't do it yet. We can't pull a trigger on it yet because we don't have anything to assess yet. We can't come up with a value of the improvements because they're not in place yet. And so that's why there's some delay here, but that's generally how the process works under the state legislation. Councilman Young, any follow-up? Just just one additional one, Madam Chair. Um, since in a, in a prior CSP that authorized uh, 20 million uh, for this, uh, we're not authorized, I mean, we're not agreeing to all of that now. So will we also then be um, Having legislation to to uh, reauthorize, I'm not I'm, I'm not sure of the right vocabulary, but um, 
you know, like we did last year with the Gulch pedestrian bridge money that we then decided, you know, we're going to reallocate it to do some other infrastructure projects. Um, well, we'll be doing the, the same here to make sure that there's not maybe um, in a year or two uh, someone in this area come back and say, oh, but we also want to do X, Y, and Z um, when we've already kind of are putting our foot down to get this better deal that does not utilize that entire 20 million. Mr. James, no, that's, that's a great question. So the uh, again, the, the 2019 capital spending plan authorized uh, an even $20 million. Then the Cooper administration negotiated what you see before you now. And so that what you see from the, the private enterprise on the other side is that they're they're putting in 7.1% per, percent of it. Essentially, it, if you do the math, you'll see they're putting in at least half of what Metro is putting in, 66% uh, versus 33%. I think what your question is, is since we're not then spending the full 20 million, is there going to be some sort of reaccounting or or flattening out that account? Um, that is a great question, a great question for the finance department. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if there's anybody online that could raise their hand that can answer. Mr. Mayor Joe, um, did you want to respond to to that, did you have anything to add or anyone else from finance? Yeah, thank you, sir. So, I really just didn't have anything to add to Mr. Jameson. Okay. Mr. Sturdivant, you recognize. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, the intent for the remaining balance of the 20 million is to use that in the next phase, which would be uh, phase 1B. Councilman Young, anything else? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, well, that's a, a shocking answer um, because then it sounds like maybe, <laughs> um, all right, that, that's a little bit to process because I thought we've just heard uh, recently the administration excited and bragging that this is a better deal because now we're gonna be spending less than, than 20 million. But um, uh, it doesn't sound like that's the case anymore. Um, I, I would, I, I, you know, I, I guess maybe with, with that in mind, it sounds like there's a little more to this than what, what, what we're being told. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was prepared to support this, but now I'm a little, um, concerned. And I, I, I think at this point I'm going to move uh, a one meeting deferral because there are a lot more questions coming out of this all of a sudden. Madam Chair, if I could respond to the, the 7 million. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. Uh, Director Cooper, since there's been a motion for a one meeting deferral, can there still be discussion? Uh, there would need to be an opportunity for a second on that motion and then further discussion. Okay. Um, second. second. All right, so it's been properly moved and seconded for a one meeting deferral. Is there any discussion on the one meeting deferral? Yes. Was that Councilman Mendez? It, it was. You recognize? Um, thanks. Um, th there, there is no change in position. Uh, I mean, I think this is, uh, uh, I mean, there, there's some miscommunication I feel like due to this um, bleeding over from one term to the next and with all due respect to the administration I wish this were being explained better um, the the 20 million was always for a first phase of development um, and so if the, the assertion that 13.8 um, is a better deal on the first phase um, is uh, um, 
is, is not might be new information um, this term um, in the grand scheme of the universe it's it's not new information it's a thing where um, my esteemed colleague and Angie Anderson um, uh, um, and the now mayor John Cooper had a lot of complaining last term about um, the fact that there were going to be subsequent tasks probably um, with subsequent um, phases of this and um, and, and so I, there, it might be uh, poorly communicated somehow or another um, but this is not new information um, and the reality is um, uh, I, I understand there's um, consternation, but um, the metropolitan government is in the business of paying for roads and infrastructure that we're not in any business whatsoever. And here we have an opportunity to pay a fraction of the overall cost of roads and infrastructure um, for um, just the sort of development that we should want. The city is going to keep growing, having a development by, like River North. It's density, it's close in, it's more connections, it's um, uh, plant development, it's development that we um, uh, uh, have the terms of rather than sprawl. Um, there's a lot to like to it. And all we're arguing about is what, what percent of the dollar are we going to pay for roads and infrastructure? And, um, and, and more time isn't going to change that. There are going to be other phases. This is going to be a mammoth development that is currently unimproved um, uh, ground space, um, one story, um, hardly any infrastructure whatsoever, warehouse district, and it's going to be turned into high rises. There are no appropriate roads and no appropriate infrastructure there. That's the sort of thing Metro should be doing. And we have a chance to pay much less than one uh, dollar. Much less. We, we, we pay cents on the dollar for that. And so I, I would be opposed to the motion. I think we should move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Suara. Comment or question on the deferral motion? Sorry, Chair, that was from before. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Hurt, then Councilwoman Henderson. Uh, comment or question on the deferral motion? Well, yes, thank you so very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I actually had a question, uh, or a couple of questions outside of the deferral, uh, but I agree with Councilmember Mendez that uh, this project was um, already appropriated and, and, and it seems as though it is going to be cost less for us now, and I would rather to move forward with this, and, and I ask um, colleagues to um, stand uh, against this deferral so we can move forward. We do need something uh, positive going on, and this was done prior to um, the, the tornado at COVID and the um, explosion. We were in very good uh, financial shape at that time, and the money has already been appropriated. So I would vote against the deferral as well. Thank you, Councilwoman Hurt. Councilwoman Henderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate you uh, recognizing me. I do not currently serve on budget and finance, uh, but did last term, and, and Mr. Mendez alluded to some of my previous concerns um, and questions that I've been raising around infrastructure uh, participation agreements. And I think, you know, Councilman Mendez's comments, those of Mr. Jamison, um, some of the questions that uh, Mr. Young is posing uh, about uh, these business improvement districts, which I think are excellent, and I'm glad to see we're doing more of them. And then also Mr. Sturdivant's comments do point to uh, colleagues, um, I, I, I would support a, a a deferral because I, I think um, while I appreciate that the community's uh, perception of, you know, kind of bread and butter, what we do as a city is, uh, you know, building roads and, and putting in water pipes, uh, in, indeed it is, but we do not approach these agreements in uh, an equitable, um, kind of principled, clear way. 
um, with certain parameters about what the splits are, uh, for whom we do these deals. Um, do we do these deals just for those who kind of have the the heft, the, the hubris to come into the mayor's office and ask for them? Um, uh, Councilman Parker has a, another um, uh, project, uh, slightly smaller, I think, but similar footprint in this area. They're not doing infrastructure participation. Um, Councilman Pulley and I have had, you know, some big projects out in the Green Hills Business District. Um, those don't have infrastructure participation. And so um, I, I'm not against infrastructure participation, but I think um, all the, uh, the, the work and the conversations and kind of, you know, through the last election, I think what we heard from citizens was um, a, a, a new way of doing business and um, making sure that we don't give citizens um, uh, the, the impression that there is preferential treatment um, for certain uh, folks. And, you know, we still can't scrape together two nickels to get, you know, $75,000 for this bike way or for your sidewalk in your neighborhood. So I would like to see the administration um, explain this better to Mr. Mendez's point. And, um, you know, I had qualms about this in the previous CSP um, because Mr. Wilshire, formerly in economic development, can speak to what went in this $20 million slushy bucket for River North. Um, no specifics at that time. And so we kind of opened the door, we pre-approved things, then we're told, you know, we've got so to negotiate. Councilwoman Henderson, is yes, this, is this all relevant that to, say, to the All that program? to say, I think we can have more um, kind of transparency and a better explanation for the community. If something of this magnitude um, is deferred uh, for one meeting, because I think the community will appreciate our um, extended consideration. Thank you, Chilton. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Porterfield. Thank you, Madam Chair. And this is for, um, I guess, the administration uh, or possibly the sponsor. Um, is there anything at risk um, if, if we do approve a one meeting deferral? Is that going to put uh, anything in jeopardy? Are we going to lose out on any type of uh, benefit if we were to defer one meeting? Mr. Jameson. Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, two responses to that. Um, this, as uh, you, you'll note in your rules, I think Rule 41 that lists the type of bills, those few that can be amended on third, this falls under the exception for economic development ordinance. So it is amendable on third to the extent council members have uh, items they want addressed, uh, we would we would urge approval on second, uh, subject to you taking up uh, amendments on third that do not require suspension of the rules. There is an element of time sensitivity because uh, on the private enterprise side of this, uh, the entities are undergoing a due diligence period uh, and a two week, two week period would, would go beyond that period. Um, I do want to hasten to, to clarify with respect to Councilman Young's concerns about, you know, is this is this seven million dollars out of the twenty million? Will that account be zeroed out, or will the seven million be allocated to a phase two? Either direction uh, that is taken, the administration couldn't just single-handedly allocate the seven million dollars to a phase two. It would come back to the council at a future date for a vote. My suspicion is that there'd be a new participation agreement with a new entity and perhaps a new C bid. But none of this is going to take place uh, with respect to the $7 million without the covert council's oversight uh, and control. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Councilwoman Porterfield, any uh, follow up to that? Um, no, thank you. Councilwoman Bircher. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think what Councilman Young was, was asking is just how, and, and I've spoken about this before, as to how things are presented, how they're packaged uh, to this body, how the media um, picks up the narrative. Um, if, Mr. Jameson, if you can just be clear with that, that 2019 CSP, if, will you just convey, confirm that that authorized amount will be spent in totality 
that uh, really at the end of the day, uh, there, there won't be any, any any savings as it relates to this project. What's been authorized, more than likely, uh, will, will be spent. And I think we just need to go ahead and just and just put it out there so that the committee knows what it is that they're actually voting on, regardless if uh, subsequent PPAs will come before uh, the council uh, or not. Um, I, I think that's extremely important because. Uh, that capital spending plan um, has already been voted uh, and approved by, by the prior body. Also, uh, Mr. Jameson, just, just with the back and forth, uh, if, if someone just can briefly just go over our, our capital spending uh, process, uh, because many of us are going to get how is it that this project um, that was just approved in the, in the capital spending plan for 2019 how is it that this project is moving forward when we have projects from prior years um, that's still remaining remaining stagnant? And so, so, Mr. Jameson, if you could answer regarding whether or not the $20 million would be spent in totality, we will save the second part um, because it's not directly on the deferral and whether or not this, uh, this item should be deferred. If we could save that till after you take the that, vote. That's fine, Chair. That's fine, Chair. It sure. just needs to be just needs to be addressed, considering that this body, this committee, budget and finance, received a direct notice from our director of finance about uh, we were not spending and that projects uh, had to be deemed essential uh, for spending. And that letter was dated November 16, 2020. So I just want to be on record, all of us need to be on record, uh, that we are indeed, uh, as a committee, uh, doing our own due diligence as it relates to authorizing spending in a pandemic and uh, with our current uh, budget issues. Uh, that's been uh, presented to this body. Now, if we don't have those issues, we need to get an updated report, and we need to know when we'll get uh, when we'll be presented with a fiscal 21 capital spending plan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, it sounds like perhaps I should at least touch on both issues. With respect to the $20 million, Mayor Cooper did personally and directly negotiate a deal so that seven point one, at least half of what Metro was on the hook for, was going to be contributed by the developers. Now, whether or not that seven in our budget accounting for the $20 million should mean we just zero out the $20 million or it, we should hold it for a phase 1B, either of those decisions comes back to the council for you to decide. And so the mayor is in fact, most emphatically making this deal better by at least a third for the benefit of the taxpayers and having the did in place, make sure that the amenities are eventually paid for by the people that get the benefit of it. With respect to the capital spending plan, Metro was on track to issue a capital spending plan in February and has signaled as much per the resolution adopted by this body at its last meeting, lifting the non-essential capital spending freeze. This project, River North, will dovetail nicely with that upcoming capital spending plan. There will be no spending on River North until the earliest at March, which would be the same timeline for any capital spending plan. This particular capital item for River North was frozen along with all of the others for the non-essential capital spending. It was not treated any more differently. But even more so, it's been frozen since it was originally improved, what, since October of 2018. So this has not been given any special privileges. It's gonna be treated and allow us to continue with economic development when the opportunity presents itself. Not every capital spending plan is gonna result in the luring of major corporations, but when those opportunities present itself, we have to do the best we can to avail ourselves of those opportunities. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Um, Councilwoman Bircher, did you have a follow-up? On the no. related to the deferral? Okay. No, no Chair. Uh, Mr. Jameson explained it and, and articulated it uh, very well, and it, and it speaks to just the inequity that we have as it relates to uh, how we prioritize projects in, in the city, Ch uh, Chair. Thank you so much, but he, he explained it very well. Thank you so much, and we have it on the record. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Syracuse, question or comment on the deferral? 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to state that I'm, I'm going to vote against a deferral. I think this is one of the most, uh, one of the most, uh, the biggest economic development uh, deal that we have before us so far this term. It's going to be very important. Um, obviously, I'm on the other side uh, of, of the river to this, but understand what this means to, overall to us. So um, I applaud the administration for making this deal even better than we already authorized. And uh, I would uh, advise uh, and hope my colleagues would vote against deferral and let's move forward with this. Thank you. Councilwoman Allen, question or comment on the deferral? Uh, yes, ma'am, comment on the deferral. My, uh, my suggestion might be, I mean, I'd, I'd uh, agree with council members um, Syracuse and Mendez that um, this, this is a net gain for the city. We will spend some money and, and it will come back to us quickly and then and then there will be more money available for schools and parks and things that don't pay money at that I think that's how we sometimes prioritize things and therefore um, I think it's it's I will vote against the deferral but I would I would ask the question that uh, perhaps by re-referring this uh, on third reading that would give some folks the opportunity to, to further ask questions and get information clarified if uh, if people feel like they need more information if that would be a solution. Um, as opposed to deferring. If you do not have a question or comment related to the deferral, if you could put your hand down, I think there may be some old hands up. Councilman Syracuse, Councilwoman Allen, Councilwoman Porterfield, Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted clarification on uh, Council Member Allen's question. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe that should go to Director Cooper, but um, I just wanted some clarification on her question about uh, re-referring it back to budget on third. Thank you. Director Cooper. Yeah, I mean, the, the council, if it, if it doesn't defer, the council could as part of its motion to approve uh, re-refer it back to budget finance since it's amendable on third reading. Thank you. Councilman Young. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, what, what this has suddenly come down to for me, uh, because my thoughts have shifted on this very quickly and dramatically, before I can vote to move something along on this council, I have to trust the information I'm getting and trust that I'm being told the full picture and all of a sudden, I, I'm, I'm just not going to do. Now, I know the math is good on this. Um, and, and I'm not opposed um, to a, particip a participation agreement such as this one. However, there are uh, now some, some uh, further discussions and questions. I think the administration owes us as a council and owes the, the people of Davidson County uh, because, yes, some of those in their second term may uh, say, okay, well, you know, we, we knew this when it was put into place and not. But at the end of the day, this is another check and balance that we have as the council now um, to make sure we understand the full picture of, of, of what we're doing moving forward. And so um, if this, if this uh, deferral does not um, passed, then I will have no choice but to vote against this, which I, I do not want to do because I, I, I don't think at the end of the day, this is a, a bad agreement, but I, I do think we're operating off of less than the full set of facts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Vercher and then Councilman Parker. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I believe what you're hearing from, from, from the committee is that everyone believes in the value of this deal. The, the heartburn is coming from the, the presentation and, and the narrative of the deal. 
uh, if the sponsor would would entertain, if, if he would amend his motion to to let us uh, approve and re-refer it back to budget and finance, uh, so that uh, uh, maybe the administration can can uh, can can present the narrative of this deal uh, a, a a little better, because we keep hearing that this is a renegotiated better, better deal. Um, it, it, we should just simply say what it is, um, where we are at this point. Um, this is a phase deal, and we're, we're going to be authorizing, uh, uh, the, the, I believe, the 13.8 uh, today with an understanding that that remainder uh, will come back to this body at, at some later point. Um, and I think everyone would be okay with that. We talk about... Uh, transparency and so forth let's just let's just call it what it is uh, so committee members can have a clear understanding as to what it is that they're that they're voting for thank you chair thank you councilwoman uh councilman parker um thank you chair i, I wanted to speak a little bit about the uh, you know i i I'm supportive of this deal. I mean, I, I have probably paid closer attention to it than, um, well, maybe some second termers have, have paid a lot of attention to this, but I've, I've paid a lot of attention to this since uh, since it was initially um, being debated as a in the 2019 capital spending plan. Of course, as a, on the other side of the other side of the pews um, back then, but. Um, you know, I, I I don't mean to contradict anything that has been said, but you know, I am in contact with um, with our um, private enterprise partners on this deal as well, and I mean, I, it, it's not my understanding that this a one meeting deferral would would pose um, any insurmountable challenges to any of our private enterprise partners now I, I, that's that's my thing and that's a pointed question that I have asked in several meetings now um, so if, if if the body wishes for a one meeting deferral I, I'm not opposed to it um, I think it would I would like to see those um, more detailed accounting and figures from uh, finance which, which the request is in, and I, I, I do hope to be able to get that, that we can get that to all the council members very soon. Um, so I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm, if what's on the table is just a one meeting deferral, um, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not personally opposed to that. Okay, and just a reminder uh, to the committee, we, we are on the deferral motion. Uh, Councilwoman Bircher did bring up uh possibly a motion to approve and re referring it to uh budget and finance on third reading and we can entertain that motion should the deferral motion fail but we are on a deferral motion currently uh and there are several hands up councilwoman Bircher, did you chair i was I, I was just offering just just being collegial to the sponsor that made the initial motion for deferral uh, if he would be gotcha. willing to amend, to amend his motion to approve and, and re-refer. Versus Council us having to take two votes, we could just take one vote. If, if he amends Member. his motion. Understood, Councilwoman Bircher. Councilman Young. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. With all respect to my friend from Antioch, uh, no, I, I am not willing to make that change. I will not be voting uh, to move this forward at this point. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Swar, question or comment on the deferral motion? Uh, comment. Uh, thank you, Chair, and I know a lot has been said. Uh, um, for this project, I support it. I think it's a good deal. I think uh, Councilmember Parker did a good job of explaining even the financial benefits uh, of all of it, and I think it's a great deal, and I support it fully. But I do uh, support the deferral motion for a reason. I think we do not want to give the impression that we are shoving something along or moving it as fast as we can. 
uh, I think if any of us have any questions, I think it's important for us to get them answered uh, before we move forward. So even though I support this, I will support it when you come back. I will support it every time. The fact that some of our colleagues have questions, uh, we don't want to give the impression that this was just moved along, even though there were, we don't want the appearance of, of, of any impropriety or the fact that we're trying to just rush through it. And so with that, uh, I would say, let's get all the question answered, uh, uh, and then we can we can move forward with the answer. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Mr. Jamison, then I'll go to Councilman Parker. On the deferral, Mr. Uh, Jamison. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I do want to underscore and repeat um, and in no way contradicting Councilman Parker, but we are advised directly by the private uh, enterprises involved in this that uh, one of them is in the midst of a due diligence period for which a two week extension period would go beyond that at their risk. Creek Lane, uh, the residential developer specifically is at risk of losing its opportunity funds. So a deferral carries a very significant risk here. Given the fact that this is amendable on third, I would recommend to the committee uh, re-refer this back to the, the Budget and Finance Committee and other committees per Council Lady Vircher's recommendations. Ask your questions as soon as possible. If you do not get them answered to your full satisfaction on third reading, defer then, but allow this to continue so that the enterprises can continue with their due diligence period and obtaining opportunity funds. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Uh, Councilman Parker, you put your hand down. Did you not have a question or comment related to the deferral motion? That was a lingering okay. hand, Chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Councilman Mendez. I was just going to thank you, Chair. I was going to say the same thing that Mr. Jameson said. There's literally no risk to the Council um, uh, by moving it forward since this is an economic development. Um, item. We only get to amend uh, budgets, um, economic development deals, and zoning bills on third reading. This is clearly amendable on third, no suspension of the rules. Um, the approach that Mr. Jameson said um, keeps every single option alive and lets everybody get any questions answered. Um, respectfully, um, de deferring is uh, on second on this is the, the language of wanting to defeat it. Um, and uh, if you're fundamentally for it, um, there's no reason to not pass it on second with a re-referral to budget and finance on third. There's plenty of time to answer the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the administration brought something up regarding the deferral and the effect of regarding the opportunity fund. And I just wanted to get a little more information about what the risk is on the opportunity fund regarding a deferral. Mr. Jameson. Sorry, always still trying to find my uh, unmute button. Um, we, the attorneys for Creek Lane have just texted and advised that their opportunity funds uh, are at risk with any extension uh, because of the two week duration. Um, I don't know if those individuals are online now and could be recognized to speak, but that's the information we've been providing. Councilman Sledge, any follow up to that? Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm just representing a district that has several different opportunity zones in it. I'm a little confused by that language because I've, I've had projects in opportunity zones that items have been deferred months at planning commissions and at councils and that's never come up so it was interesting to hear that thanks thank you councilman councilwoman benedict thank you chair um so i'm i can't support the deferral i think that this uh, a couple of my colleagues have spoken about the fact that this can be amended on third um, I don't like what we just heard that, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to feel like we are, um, I don't, I think coerced is a little strong, but, uh, you know, being made to move more quickly because of an outside party's um, funding. However, I can understand that as well. Uh, I think what I, what I would like to, to see us do is um, get this through 
tonight with a re-referral to the committee. Uh, a number of us have spoken about that. And um, and then I would like the administration to come back and provide us with a better presentation of this from the administration. I think that um, my colleague from uh, just to my south and across Gallatin Pike has done a great job with this, but I, I concur that I think there's um, more information that could be shared from the administration so that we can uh, ensure that everybody understands what this will mean for our city and including the infrastructure improvements that will take place. So um, again, I, I uh, thank you, Chair. I cannot uh, support a deferral and I hope that we're able to, I encourage my colleagues to um, also uh, vote against the deferral and let's go ahead and get this through with a re-referral back to us so we can make sure that uh, if it were to pass on third reading, that we all have a much better um, understanding and that uh, there's consensus on it, that it is the right and best solution for the city. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilman Sledge, is that an old hand? Mr. Jameson, is that an old hand? Oh, thank you. Seeing no other hands in the queue, we are on the deferral motion. Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Nay. Benedict? No. Druffel? No. Mendez? No. Porterfield? No. Roten? No. Sledge? No. Uh, Suara had to go to rules. Uh, Syracuse? No. Toombs? No. Bircher? No. Young? Yes. One in favor, 10 against. Okay, the motion to defer fails. So we are on, still on the, back on the motion to approve the bill as amended. I'm going to our uh, approval as amended with a re-referral back to budget and finance. Second. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve and re-refer to budget and finance. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Allen. Yes, Madam Chair, I would just um, clarify, it, apparently people have questions and I think it would be helpful to ensure that the information that's provided at the with the re-referral is complete. Um, so can, um, can you identify who we should send our questions to um, so that those can all be compiled? Mr. Jameson or to you as the chair, where should we direct those questions? Uh, Director Cooper, should those questions go to you or to Mr. Jameson? Either one, if, if they come to me, I'll, I'll get them to Mr. Jameson. Okay, thank you. Councilman Mendez. Chair, they, chair, they oh. should go to Director Cooper. Um, si similarly, um, can we, we set a deadline uh, for questions to everybody um, laid out whatever their questions were today, but um, in order to, uh, if there is time pressure, um, it, it seems like people should get their questions in by the end of the week, um, but uh, it's, it's not up to me to figure that out. I would suggest a, a deadline to submit questions. Director Cooper, is a, a Friday deadline to submit questions sufficient? Uh, yes, that, that will be fine. So committee members, whatever questions you have, you can submit those to Director Cooper by this Friday. I am looking through the queue to see if there is any further discussion. Seeing none, Director Cooper, will you take the roll call vote, please? Allen? Aye. Benedict? Aye. Druffel? Aye. Mendez? Aye. Cloverfield? Aye. Roten? Aye. Sledge? Aye. Syracuse? Aye. Toombs? Aye. Bircher? Aye. Young? No. 10 in favor, one against. Motion carries, and that is the, that was the last item on the agenda. So that completes our business for this afternoon. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.